I know with my dad's passing and, and my grandfather's passing, one of the, the most difficult parts in their lives were their loss of mobility. My dad had an injury to his neck that he lost feeling in his arm. And I do feel that for a lot of us, as we age, mobility is going to become a really important factor in, in our quality of life. Obviously you practice yoga. Was there anything that you learned from our elders who were limber and who were in great shape that could help us maintain that physical side of things so that we can have the movement and be able to, to live a long, happy and fulfilling life? I mean, there's certain kinds of exercise that'll just crush you. I mean, running is so hard on your body, you know, and most of the time you don't see people that live to be very old who were runners. Now I, my in-laws are runners and if they're hearing this, they're probably like, <laughs> it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but the pounding is just so Certainly, intense, right? it's so intense. And you know, you have to think in terms of longevity stretching is much healthier and then you want to be agile you know i mean i think the yogis say you can tell how healthy somebody is not by the shape of their body but by the agility of their spine and i think that really carries into old age yeah your ability to pick things up as you get older <laughs> totally <laughs> comes totally. down to exactly that and for a lot of us we're not thinking about those things Right. Yeah, I mean, like having a bicep the size of your head. I mean, what's the practicality of that? Well, know? it's great if you're an influencer like Johnny, but <laughs> you know, that, that fades. <laughs> so you're going to want to be able to move. You're going to want to be able to hang out with your grandchildren and actually get on the floor and get up and pick things up. And, and that is something that wanes as we get older. Yeah, and I think even more than the physical health is the mental health and how you exercise your mind and, you know, like just gratitude there's this leading researcher on gratitude and he says that gratitude, you have to be a badass to be grateful because gratitude is morally and intellectually demanding. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy to wake up and fixate on all the stuff that you got to get done. And it's hard to wake up and shift your focus to everything that's good in your life. And so just mental strength is really important as well. Yeah. And when you're in a state of gratitude, you can't have any other emotional feelings you're strictly in gratitude unlike you know multitasking i can be afraid i can be angry but when you're focused on gratitude and being grateful that's the only state that you can be in yeah and the whole thing about it shifting uh, on focus of of what you have rather than what you don't have and it's certainly a, a, it, it is a shift and it does uh, it does take patience and it does take work to be able to do that i i certainly know uh when i I had learned about appreciation and started practicing it. I know that not only did my thoughts about where I was in life change, but how I woke up and approached every day changed. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's an everyday practice. It's so easy to focus on what you need and what you don't have. One of my favorite quotes is this, to think you need something you don't already have is a form of insanity. And I think it's true. I mean, your whole life you could be searching for the things you don't have. and. How are you going to appreciate the things you hope to have in the future if you can't appreciate what you have right this moment? So, And I think for a lot of us, taking a step back and thinking about where we were you know, as a kid, where we were just five years ago, allows us to actually find that stuff to be grateful for. Yeah. Because a lot of us are present, forward-looking, thinking about the future and what we don't have. And time, and time again, we just have to take a step back and realize, well, you know, four years ago, I couldn't run this fast. I couldn't lift this much weight. I couldn't talk to this many people. I didn't have this level of confidence at work. So it is looking backwards to see just how far you've come to find that gratitude. And we love the five-minute journal. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I have it, yeah. yeah. It's great. It's a fantastic practice. Morning and evening, it, a few prompts. You fill it out every single day, and it really reinforces the gratitude. And it does. It's been scientifically shown to lift your mood and change your mental health, which I think is huge as we get older. It, it's huge. And, and like I was trying to paint the picture when you're 90 and – you may not have the agility to get around, but if your mind is fit and strong, that's that's really important because you're going to be spending a lot more time with your thoughts. And if you have beautiful thoughts, it's going to be a beautiful life. If your thoughts are going down a black hole, it's going to be a struggle. Well, and certainly we we were just discussed, and you were mentioning them. If that's if you were a warrior at forty, imagine what that is going to look like at sixty five. So it's no time like the present than to get. Uh, positivity training and, and getting that fixed, that wiring I mean, fixed out. Change is difficult. Transforming yourself, we're actually gonna, it's gonna be an upcoming theme 
month for us, transformation, but transformation is hard. Change is very hard. A lot of us are set in our ways. What was the biggest transformation you saw or witnessed from an elder who just in their youth were one way and then as they aged, they, they changed? Oh, wow. That's a good question. I have to think about that one. I didn't, I didn't write a lot about the elders that transformed. I think the more interesting part was looking through the lens of an elder and seeing their perspective, looking back over their life and what they see as the important moments that stood out across 80, 90, 100 years. And I mean, one, you know, everybody over that span of a lifetime goes through hell. If you hit rock bottom, you go through hell. Not all of the elders ever bounce back from that. That's a decision that you have to pick yourself up and bounce back. A lot of them, they stayed down for years and that usually manifested as some kind of illness or disease. So the, the, the wherewithal to pick yourself up and keep trucking, that's an important one. I mentioned uh, just the value that you place on relationships and community is really important. If you spend a lot of alone time, it tends to, to wear on you as you get older. So it's really like looking through the, from the lens of an elder, looking back on their life. Another interesting thing that I learned is I would always ask if they're scared of death because when you're 80, 90, 100 years old, any breath could be your last. Right. And honestly, not one time did they say they were scared to die. And most of the time they said they welcomed it. And I thought that was really, really interesting because death is a scary subject in our culture. Yeah, I definitely feel like just thinking about it, that it's scary for me as I sit here. So I, I can't imagine getting to that place. But, you know, that's just it, that resiliency and understanding how to be grateful for the life that you have and all of the things you've been able to accomplish, I would assume, allows you to get there. Yeah. And also, you know, in, in yoga, the, the Shavasana is like the most wonderful part of yoga. It's the, the corpse pose or the death pose and learning to just relax into that peace is the feeling that you kind of sense is what happens when when older people are approaching the end. It's not this scary, anxiety-ridden thing, but it's like a, a sense of peace. 